But I want to talk a little bit about a bit of history. Um, originally, the land in the upper Rock saw was owned by Americans. Probably prior to that, it was uh, used by uh, Native people. But it was given away uh, under conditions that were never met the railroads. I think people need to understand that from first. And there's a history of fraud uh, in uh, uh, railroad land fraud, and it's well documented uh, historically. So that's something I think people need to understand first. I think the second thing we need to look at is, as Sally mentioned, uh, and reading from one of the things that I sent to her, the issue today has not been whether or not acquiring the upper lock saw is a good idea. Uh, that hasn't been the issue. But, however, the reluctance of the Forest Service to embrace public sentiment, overwhelming public sentiment, in opposition to an exchange, I fear, will turn many citizens against even acquiring the upper lock saw. That would be a tragedy uh, from my um, perspective. I think it's shooting, the agency is shooting itself in the foot, frankly. The big question is, are these exchanges in the public interest? Can anybody guess which is the national forest on this uh, satellite photo and which of the checkerboards uh, were previously owned by Plum Creek, now by Western Pacific? <laughs> Not too hard, is it? Okay. All right. Private, 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 private. Okay. That's uh, another little view here of, um, again, the upper lock saw. So <coughs> it's interesting, one of the watchdog groups um, that looks at land exchanges said this several years ago. That in more and more cases, the Forest Service and Bureau of Land Management are trading ecologically important lands to mining, timber, grazing, and development interests in return for damaged private lands. Too often the trades are initiated by the private party, not the agency, with the intent of seizing public resources for extraction or development. Well, that sounds very familiar. And in fact, as, as was noted, the land was purchased by Western Pacific Timber for the express purpose of doing an exchange with the Forest Service. So that's the situation here. All right. I want to talk about some of the analysis here and, and the concern of, uh, of the adequacy of the analysis. And this is, this is an aerial photograph of Elk City Township. There are a couple things Teresa didn't mention. Um, much of the Elk City Township, in fact, the largest land owner inside of that township is you and I. It's land uh, managed by the Bureau of Land Management. So in a sense, it's public land that goes across the township. Here's a township boundary right here. Boom, boom, right there. Okay, something like that, and then over here, we have the township boundary. This is land owned by you and I. This is public land by the Bureau of Land Management. It's interesting to note that in, in terms of the Nez Perce National Forest, um, they, their forest plan said this, uh, the forest plan environmental impact statement. National forest ownership is nearly solid. That's on page, in the final environmental impact statement, page 3-54. And it suggests an exchange program is not quotes, justified except under very rare um, circumstances. What we're doing, in essence, is this uh, a chunk of land over here is what would be given up. You know, this is private now, but this is public. So we're creating sort of a little, not exactly an in-holding, but we'd be creating another peninsula and creating more management problems. So we're sort of robbing Peter to pay Paul here on, on specifically <coughs> on this one. The regulations for exchanges state that the Forest Service will exchange only lands that are suitable for elimination from the national forest system and will reserve rights to retain the interests that are needed for um, that are needed for the public interest. So those are some of the things we're looking at here. A couple more uh, uh, slides here. Um, this is the last one. Now, the reason I'm throwing this one up here, this is from the, the draft environmental impact statement of the Forest Service. 
Uh, the first year exchange parcels, ones that will happen immediately, were supposed to be, at least they're portrayed in the EIS, you at least want to believe that they're isolated and not contiguous with other parts of the National Forest System. But when we look up here, in west, these West Dennis parcels, this is National Forest, so this is kind of part of that chunk here. Uh, the same is true over here. So that's one of the concerns, is that, you know, these, we seem to be getting some mixed signals here in this draft environmental impact statement about what the agency wants to do. Well, there's some big issues, there's some huge issues that are uh, site specific, but they're also sort of global in nature. Others, others are global. Appraisals. <coughs> there is not an appraisal, as Teresa mentioned, it hasn't begun. There's not an appraisal in the draft environmental impact statement. So we as a public don't get a chance to look at that when, when we're making our comments. In the interest of full disclosure, you know, for open government, I think this, the draft environmental impact statement should have had taught in a detailed way about appraisal methodology, uh, assumptions used in the land valuation, the identity of the contract appraisers, uh, qualifications, etc., etc. And the Forest Service needs to make sure, though, that those uh, appraisals are available to the public. That's one of the problems. Why do I harp on this? The National Environmental Policy Act says this. An analysis needs to be made, and here's the key word, before decisions are made. All right, there's an MOU from the, between Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, Western Pacific and Timber and others, in 2008 said the purpose of this was to conduct an exchange. It seems like the decision, for all practical purposes, was made before they even came out with this draft of our middle back statement. That's actually a violation of law. And that's a concern. The integrity of the process, the integrity of public right to become involved in the process. Other concerns, the uh, General Accounting Office, the government, they've, they've shown continually that the land exchange program of both the Bureau of Land Management and the Forest Service has serious problems. In this case, they, I don't think there's an overall goal. In the case of the Nez Perce National Forest, where some of the land is going to be given away, pretty much the forest said, we really don't need to do that. It's not something that needs to be done, but yet here we're going and trading that land away. Fast tracking, putting it on a fast track, and then deed restrictions for land that is conveyed. And I've read through the whole EIS. I've done it once very quickly. I'm going to go back now and look at it in some detail. It's kind of hard to read on the computer. And so you know, you know, I'm going to ask you, Teresa, for a hard copy at some point. But uh, one of the regulations the Forest Service has is that Seattle reserves such rights or retains such interests as are needed to protect the public interest or shall otherwise restrict the use of federal lands to be exchanged as appropriate. I think we need to look um, hard at that, and I think uh, citizens uh, will probably want to comment on that. Well, what are some of the alternatives to uh, what's been considered a uh, fairly uh, uh, flawed process? I think yeah, that... Yeah, a couple of minutes, Gary. Okay. Um, we talked about the Land and Water Conservation Fund as possible purchases. Possible easements and indeed restrictions. Maybe uh, coming up with a cooperative management plan for the upper lock zone. It could also be an option. That was one that we suggested in our comments, and it really wasn't acted upon. So I'm going to leave it at that. Just one um, little personal note. I've been up here in the West, um, been here all my life. Uh, I saw in Utah, where, I, where I'm from originally, um, some very important public lands that were given with the express purpose of being used for the public interest. They were sold by the U.S. Forest Service because of political pressure dealing with the Salt Lake City Olympics. So um, the public has to be forever vigilant, and that's it. <laughs>